Hello, my name is Audrey Gordon, and I welcome you to day 14 of the 25 Days of Co-Pilots. Today, we're going to talk about the amazing pitcher opportunities with Copilot and Edge. These are things that I use just about every day because I need to create visuals for presentations, for uh, customer events, visuals to help people understand things. So I really love leveraging the power of, of GPT and DALI, which is built into the Copilot for Edge. So let's, let me show you a few that I've done and kind of talk to you about things you need to keep in mind as you try this yourself. First of all, what about logo creation? How about we do a simple prompt like this? Create a simple vector style logo for a new company named Coffee Friends using only two colors with very high contrast. So I did this this morning and when I did it, these are the four images it generated. And I was especially impressed with all of them. So you'll notice that on, on the two on the left, they're very kind of vector looking images. The two on the right have some variances. So like they could be used for app icons. So if I was doing an app about ordering coffee, I might use one of these nine images here on the right for that. So up here, you see there's nine different images. So in this case, it generated a bunch of images that could be considered a logo in itself, but I think it's a variance of nine smaller icons, which would be awesome for my apps. Now you might be thinking, well, what about that text right here that really says nothing? Well, it's very easy to edit that. And I'm actually going to do it right here in PowerPoint. So I'm just going to move myself into edit mode and then I'm going to click on this image and zoom in. Okay, so I've zoomed in to this image very tightly and now I'm going to insert a shape, a simple rectangle shape. And from the shape fill, I'm going to pick the eyedropper and then click on the background. So te technically what I just did was hide what was there. And I can copy and paste that for these little ones on the side if I'd like to as well. So I just copy and paste that shape and then I can cover up, so to speak, those other two. Now I can add a text box right here. And in that text box, put whatever I want. Right, so maybe I want it to say just friends or something else. And then what I can do is highlight that text, lower its size, kind of match it to some of the other ones which might have a doc font. And so I might just pick from my fonts, whatever I think works well here, and then just make sure that it's in the front. Um, and let's make it black like everything else, but we don't have to. So you can see how easy I can completely revise any image, um, not just the ones that were generated here. And then I can use my easy snippet functions in Windows or in whatever software, whatever OS I'm using to take a screenshot of that. What I like to do is just paste it right on the screen, the screenshot, and then save as picture and now put that somewhere where I can upload it to my app as an icon or wherever I want to use it. So I really love the idea of getting um, Copilot to build the image, but then revising the image, which is so easy to do in PowerPoint. And in this case, I was really impressed because these uh, image generators aren't usually great at text, but um, a couple of these look pretty good. I could almost leave this one on the lower left as is, and um, it would work. Um, so, and I can uh, always vectorize these using uh, Illustrator or some other software that will take the pixels and make them into vector. All right, so that's one idea. Let me show you maybe another logo idea, and that is, if you're using simple letters, so simple letters, like I would say one or two letters, um, 
these uh, AI engines can usually do a great job of generating off of that, right? Whereas they're not great with spelling and words. They are great with understanding the alphabet. So here I, I gave a prompt. I said, create an artistic but vector style logo focused on the letter A. So maybe the company is Alta Vista. I don't know. Let's give it a name. And which starts with an A. And now I want to create a logo. And this company predicts the weather in a fun way. So notice the weather inside the letter A. And I thought that was a really great take on the whole thing. And if I wanted to edit it in any way, of course, I can do something similar to what I did on the previous slide. Another thing I like to do sometimes, even in presentations, is comic strips. And comic strips are really fun. I created, in this case, a comic strip image in the style of Charlie Brown that makes a funny joke about rainy days. All right, so it, I, I live in Seattle and uh, we have a sufficient amount of rain over here. So it becomes like something that we can talk about. But rain is often used in illustrations to highlight maybe difficult times or on the other side of the coin, storm watches and or um, persistence, those kind of things. So by using an image, I can support a story that might not be directly about rain, but people can understand you need an umbrella, you need some type of risk mitigation, or you need a friend to help you out. Um, or it's just, you know, maybe it's a difficult thing. Now, again, you're not going to get these wonderful words if you get um, speech bubbles, but exactly do doing what I did a few minutes ago, you can completely change the words in these comic strips. Now, they always give four, but I could take just this one, make it bigger, and and have more space for the words. So really kind of fun way to create your own comic strips. Next one, what if you're writing a book and you need a book cover? Well, uh, you can also use prompting to create book covers. Um, and, you know, I could think of any title page cover, like where you need a cover that's depicting kind of what the, the thing is about. So this is a cover for a book for a men's technical magazine. So it's a geeky kind of a magazine, um, mostly targeted to uh, the male audience. And that we just said in the prompt, create a, create a creative book cover in the style of the movie Mission Impossible for a men's tech magazine cover. And so you can in incorporate personas in these prompts and then maybe the persona or the style will give you something that supports the contents of your book and or presentation and or story that you're working on. I really thought this one was pretty cool. And I was surprised that in about every case that I did this prompt, I actually saw a book in the image, which I thought was cool, although it wasn't intended on my part. So if ever you have that situation, you can just highlight the cop, the, the, the book itself and use that. So you can just crop that image and focus on the cover of the book, or you can use the whole thing as the cover of the book, which I actually love in this case. In this one, I created a photorealistic title slide image for a presentation about climate change. And here's where I wanna to talk to you a little bit about aspect ratio. Um, DALI does not currently offer various variations on the aspect ratio. And as we all know, PowerPoint doesn't really want a square image. It wants an image of a different, you know, orientation. So aspect ratio, normally we think of it like seven to four, or I think three to four, something like that. And I just want to show you that that should not stop you to use this in PowerPoint, right? So you can take this image and let's show you an example of that. All I'm going to do is go back into PowerPoint mode and I'm going to copy this image just to my clipboard. And then I'm going to scroll over to a brand new deck in PowerPoint and I'm going to paste that image. The designer will kick in here and offer me variations on aspect ratio, which can work well with my slide presentation. Now I'm going to do this again on the next thing as well. So you can see that depends on what you have going on. In this next one, 
I was doing a banner for a YouTube channel. So who doesn't need to create banners for all their social media, right? And in this case, I asked for a banner for my YouTube channel and I pretended that my YouTube channel focuses on reviewing modern kitchen gadgets. Now, gadgets. Now, by the way, you might say, but Audrey, that's landscape. It was, it was square and the two edges were empty. So if you think of it, it was square. And all I did was crop out the center. And because I cropped out the center, if I go back to PowerPoint here and maybe add a new slide, and I usually pick the layout first before I paste. I'm gonna pick a title slide and then I'm gonna paste that image. Again, the designer is helping me, even offering a full aspect ratio um, to cover the entire slide because I cropped out you know, a, 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 an aspect that was horizontal. And I can do that on this other one as well, right? If I wanted to focus on just the top of this screen or something, and you can see here that even though this is square, it still gave me an aspect ratio in designer. So sometimes kind of wait or try a couple of times, go back to the slide. You'll be surprised how PowerPoint will help you create various aspect ratios and also help you create those, those uh, landscape banners that you'll need for your social media. So really love how PowerPoint does that, even getting very creative in how it uses the image inside of the deck, which I, I kind of love that kind of thing. And again, you can replace the text using kind of what I did before, or if you're really good at Photoshop, man, you could be done in 30 seconds adding your own text to the image. So I really love this. I think this is something that I would say I use on a daily basis because I'm very visual centric. So I wanted to make sure I share this with you as well. And let me just give you three important tips. Um, save your images, because when the Copilot generates these images in Edge, right, using the uh, Copilot in, uh, in Edge, um, it doesn't actually save your images anywhere where you can go back and see what you did last week. So remember just to first click on the images that are generated and then it'll open them bigger in the browser and you can right click and save image as and put it in some repository. You might wanna dedicate a certain OneDrive folder or desktop folder to your draft images. And then second thing, what we did just a few minutes ago, use the designer or photo editing software to vary aspect ratio. Sometimes you'll do this by cropping as well um, because all of the DALI images will be square as, as of today, okay? And then also, because this is an integration inside of the OpenAI Foundation model, which includes DALI, not just GPT-4, it's a good idea to review the DALI documentation on styles and tones and how you can get the best out of your images. So personally, this is one of those things I love. The, the uh, image for the 25 days of Copilot was created in the exact same way. This image in the back here for this screen, I ended up creating, I think two or three that were perfect for this technical advent calendar. So I wanted to make sure you got this idea and you give it a try and please do comment below and let me know how it went for you. And that's it for day 14 of the 25 days of co-pilots. I'll be seeing you tomorrow on day 15. Happy holidays.